No, that is terrible advice. Wait, for real? Just kidding. Wait a minute. I'm very aware. I'm 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 intimately aware. (laughs) That's my thing. I just like playing with wires and tinkering and building things and breaking stuff. And my wife hates it because I make the internet go on and off all day. (laughs) (laughs) Why is the internet not working? Or my kid will not be able to play Minecraft. But it's fine. No, you don't do anything else. (laughs) You just keep working and you never send invoices. Yeah. And yeah. you just keep working, and yeah. you just ignore everyone else in your life, <laughs> yeah. and you just keep working. Well, well, I think or the biggest, take a uh, sabbatical. I think the biggest reason other, you should do it, and I've been very supportive of you doing it, is the idea that you won't blow up in a random ass meeting for no good reason. <laughs> 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 Go on vacation. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Get a bust a vein. I felt so much better when the wreck happened because I was like, oh my god, no one's gonna expect me to be anywhere. And I was like, wow, that's yeah. a feeling yeah. of like, that's, uh, oh, that's thank crazy. God I had this wreck because like, now I don't have, thank God I almost yeah, died. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and I think that's a sense mm. that's, that's where you really, it's a signal that, okay, the so life you were living before that was not the life you should be living. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, roughly seven years ago, I left my retail job at Starbucks, right? And I left the world where you, uh, where you clock in and clock out at, at, at like specific times. And I entered the, into the world of like starting your own business. And one of the things that was the, the coolest about that was that I no longer cared about how much I was working, right? Because for the first time in my life, my name was attached to something and something was like mine. And so like I would spend 19 hours on a design. I was spending four to five hours on editing photo shoots. I was spending just exorbitant amounts of uh, exorbitant amounts of time. And uh, because and that's 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 really different from from working in uh, retail or working in a, in a nine to five job, because a lot of times in nine to five jobs, you can check out midday right you can check out midday you can stop you, you can, mean mentally check out. you can yeah you can mentally check out you can stop trying people and, check and, out the second they show up at work sometimes <laughs> sometimes, sometimes uh but uh you can mentally check out uh and you kind of protect yourself a little bit sometimes in that way from burning out uh but i i i faced some burnout like never before when i was spending like uh i was working i I think I counted up, but I was one day I worked like 19 hours, uh, 19 hours uh, a day. Uh, And this past uh, this past summer, I was having days where I was waking up at 6 a.m. I was going to bed at 1 a.m. And uh, just like every single day. And I was like if and there was nights where I was like staying up all night just to like meet deadlines. And uh, so today we're going to talk about burnout. We're going to talk about recharging versus just like s- gratifying yourself like there's those are those are two different things because it's escapism it's gratifying. Yeah, yeah escapism, escapism. Yep. it's it's gratifying to to binge uh, a, a season of something like some uh some kind of show it's gratifying to do that but does it recharge you not all the time and i guess that's what we what i want to talk about today i want to talk about uh burnout and actually recharging yeah and 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 what kind of resonates with me on what you were saying there is the idea of like you can work really hard at something for extended periods of time if you're really passionate about it. Mm-hmm. But it's a Piper, Piper's got to be paid. Yeah, but if you're in business, right, beyond the creative element of what you're doing that's exciting, you then still have other things you need to do surrounding that creative activity. Mm-hmm. So you need to send invoices, you need to follow up with clients, <laughs> you need to do other things, right? No, you don't spending- do anything else. <laughs> you just keep working. And you never send invoices yeah, and yeah. you just keep working and yeah. you well, just ignore everyone else in your life yeah. and you just keep working. Well, the reason why most <clears throat> entrepreneurs or small business owners experience that first burnout is because they don't know how to delegate or they haven't delegated or know how to delegate or <clears throat> the reason and there's a lot of reasons why they don't do it. One is they always think they can do it better than anyone else. Superhero which syndrome. Which is true. Um, but you got, if you think about it from a money perspective, what is your time worth? Is it worth $100 an hour? Is it worth $500 an hour? It's easy, you know, way to figure that out. But if you're doing admin level type work and your time per hour for what you essentially charge is 100 bucks, you're doing a task that would take someone that you could pay 
fifteen dollars an hour to do, but in reality you're costing yourself that hundred dollar an hour when you could be going out and generating income or new business, new sales, versus it's co- it's costing you more money versus you not delegating. So well, and and I, what also I read from that though is that as a creative, Aaron is you you could be so down the rabbit hole with one particular client or one particular project or just mode it, of, mode of working yeah and that it prevents you from taking action steps on other things to grow your business right yeah to ryan's point going out and hunting for new <clears throat> clients or to have client follow-up conversations with clients to create new business but uh it's kind of like one of those things where if you go down the path to perfection on one thing mm-hmm then you have this like list in the back of your mind of other things that need to be done. That's yep. like a homework assignment that's never complete, right? Yeah. And that can be like that can cause burnout, right? Because it can be the sense of anxiety over the fact that you have all these things that are existing in your mind that don't just go away because you did a lot of work on one thing. What's yeah? Yeah. They only go away when you do work on the other things. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they, they they only they only go away because like you don't have a uh, an HR department. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. just you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just you and you're alone. And if you don't if you don't tackle it, it, it just doesn't get tackled. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so it's and it's always waiting for you. And the monsters get a little bigger <laughs> because so, you waited for them to grow yeah. up. The thing was scary. Now the the couple that um, let's say that one tagline. They hear a lot when you're starting new as an entrepreneur is hustle 24 7. Yeah, that was a big you know thing that i thought you had to do grind 24 7 never stop as no as terrible advice wait for real just kidding wait a minute i'm, I'm very aware that for like seven years i'm we intimately aware <laughs> this idea up until like two three in the morning talking about china <laughs> and then uh, getting up at like six seven o'clock every day like, like dude go to sleep i don't do that anymore uh i just i do it you know, you're getting, you're getting old now. I just don't care. You're getting old. I <laughs> <That> too. <laughs> the uh, and I have reduced the amount of businesses that I've owned because it causes too much stress. Mm. I had this idea that um, needed nine streams of income. Well, you do need multiple streams of income, but I had this idea of like trying to be everywhere at once um, and trying to master everything, mm. and that's very difficult when you're spread out over a multitude of categories. Um, Grant, there are other business, a lot of other people that have multiple streams of income. It's just, it takes time. I would yeah. say focus on one first to where then you can find someone to replace your job or find people to replace portions of your job uh, that are meant for other people. And then you can start focusing on other things. So like I was way too, you can ask James, I'm just like, my mind is all over the place when I was focused on this business, the Lux Metal Card, the crypto mining stuff, the real estate uh, flipping business. Uh, it's just all over the place, and uh, I wasn't concentrated on, well, on and, one, and the quality of work went down. And then what happens? And my is, stress level went up. If yeah, <laughs> if you if you uh, have adversity in any one of those pockets, right? All of that because our minds don't work like little boxes that you can just take something and box it up and put it away and then think about something else, right? Compartmentalizing, while while it is a strategy you can have and it is something, a, a yeah. skill that in your brain that you can work on, right? So I thought it, I was great at yeah, it. Well. Just because <laughs> just, it, it doesn't mean that you're never gonna have these things bleed into each other. Yeah, right? well, it's like, um, so I heard somebody make an analogy one time that emotions are like syrup on waffles. Mm-hmm. You can compartmentalize mm-hmm. a little bit of syrup yeah, like, until like the little un- pockets. Until until the syrup overflows, over. overflows, overflows, and then you have so a delicious waffle. Yeah. Something <laughs> a sticky plate. Something would happen, like with one business, and I'd get very angry, and then I'd be getting to a meeting to another business where I shouldn't be angry, and then like. James says the wrong thing to me at the wrong time, and I just, like, snap because I'm just so pissed off at something else. It, it's not helpful or healthy. Um, so I've cut down, like, the biggest stress out of all those businesses was actually the crypto money. That was a, I thought you could <clears> – <throat> the idea is, oh, you can automate that, and it, it's crypto money. It just runs itself. <laughs> that's <laughs> definitely not the case. Well, um, and, and if we were to talk about, like, what are the and, – and that's very true, right, is that if you blow up – on people who we're not expecting you to blow up. It's not a healthy thing to have. How you doing, Ryan? Um, <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's the other thing, right? It's what's so weird is that our bodies, while we've adapted in many ways to this modern life, right? 
we are still evolutionary creatures, right? So we still have all of these tendencies within our body and our minds and our physiology that go back to the idea of being in the Serengeti and a, and a tiger chasing you, right? Or a lion chasing you, right? And to the point where what's really interesting, but I've been watching the show and I mentioned this to you all, uh, Chris Hemsworth, Le Limitless on, um, on Disney Plus, right? Uh, Nat Geo. And one of the things they're talking about is the idea that stress is so like anatomically, anatom anatomically. anatomically, right, wired into us that when you get the flight or flight, fight or flight mentality of mm -hmm. like something's chasing you, right, and you need to run or you mm -hmm. need to fight, not just do you get stress, so that's one area is like the mental element of it, but the nerves in your body actually cause, for example, your uh, your veins and arteries to constrict. Yeah, it's cortisol pumping. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you have these hormones pump out that constrict your blood flow for the re very real possibility that you're mauled by a lion and you don't bleed out, right? Because if you're mauled by a lion and you haven't had, you didn't have constricted uh, arteries, then you could bleed out faster. Right? Oh my God. Like, and so that is something that in our modern lifestyle we don't experience. But in the conference room, and in a business meeting, there's just as much stress that can happen to us. And then it's all about how do you deal with that? And the way you deal with that will also then impact your physiology and what your, how there's you work, also a, your body reacts to it. This whole work-life balance mm -hmm. is also another bullshit term that's used a lot. There's no such thing as work-life balance. And if you're trying to achieve that, you'll never get to, you never get to that point. And plus, your business will never grow with this work-life balance. I understand if you're trying to level everything out, So, but <clears throat> when you own a business, that's just one that's not possible. Um, but what can you do to reduce that level of stress? What, what do you mean? What, uh, it, it, help, help me understand what yeah. when you say. I think defining that, right, is important. Yeah, you need to yeah. define that because, because there, you have to have balance. Because the whole point is burnout. If you don't balance anything, then you're, well, you you got to have balance. I think every person's set balance is going to be different. Oh, yeah. I would I, agree with going, that. It's going to be different, but you never achieve that, that whole aspect because there's the burnout that you get, and what do you do to solve that burnout? You do vacation. Are you going to take a vacation every single time after you go uh, get off your uh, work? After? I mean, well, I mean... I, well, yeah, I, you, know, the funny, you, like, if it's you, a vacation, you take a vacation or it's a mental health thing, or, I mean, if you oh, need a balance, or like I, I just like every every 40 minutes, I get up. I get away from my computer. I take a 10-minute walk. Like, I have to get away because I sit down 10 hours out of the Where? day. So there's that balance. But if work-life balance, you're talking about balancing work and your personal life, right? And, like, and I think what I agree that. with like – what's, what's the definition of work-life balance? Yeah, I would How agree with Ryan that? on this fact, right? And I think this is what you're trying to say. You're never going to have – exact buckets of time in your life you're Correct. never going to have oh, as a business you work owner, this many definitely. you work this many uh, hours you have this much time person. you're doing this and this much time with all of those will never be perfectly imbalanced there's going to be a level of imbalance you we spend more time sleeping than we do eating right we spend yeah. more time uh you know at work probably than we do in like our favorite hobby or pastime but i think in my interpretation of it it's if you can be very intentional and engaged and in the moments in the periods of time you're doing said activity, right? Because it, to your point, if you're binging a show and you're using it for escapism, there is value in escapism. Sometimes you just need to distract yourself from the madness of what's going on. But if you're binging that show for escapism, but you're still thinking about that problem at the office- You're avoiding you, it. Yeah. Then, then you're, you're not really engaged in that activity, right? Or if your brain needs a break, and you're uh, and you're filling it with entertainment. Yeah, like that that may not be such a great thing. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you you might not be uh, you might you might be compounding the or well, no not not compounding the problem. I would say that you are uh, taking a break for more work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because you're making your brain work. You're getting invested in this. You're being emotionally. Uh, you're, you're watching uh, something that's emotionally charged. Mm -hmm. Whatever you know what whatever have whatever have. There's an article I read about. Um, maintaining productivity throughout the day is have two chairs in your office and one is strictly for work you don't pick up your phone don't text or whatever i mean obviously if texting is work it's one thing but you don't distract yourself if you feel that you're in a decline of performance you use your other chair you don't take any devices you don't take any entertainment with you and you allow yourself to be bored 
until you're so bored that Ooh, you, that's hard that, <laughs> that you want to be crea- that you want to be creative again mm-hmm. because that that cultivates that kind of like work life balance it cultivates that productivity itself because you go yeah. we always have those cycles mm-hmm. like throughout the day you're like oh, I'm so burnt out I don't want to do this anymore I need a break so I actually I do that I actually use the chair and it works like I'll, I'll have like that's a interesting mo- that's I'll cool have, like, yeah I'm yeah, gonna use that I'll, second I'll, chair I'll, tr- I'll try it try it. It, it, like try it for like a week and find yourself. Ryan, you might have a hard time because you have ADHD, but <laughs> you know, get give it a whirl. Like don't don't take anything. Just I do move there. seats throughout the day. Right. Like I'm in the conference room. I'll sit in my well, office. Well, that's changing your environment. Yeah. So let's but let's talk I would about say this. Like the creativity part of it. If you feel like you're, if you got like writer's block, or if like you're stuck on like, oh man, I don't know how to cut this video a certain way, or this audio isn't working. You're oh. just like hitting this wall and you can't go anywhere else. Those phrases the themselves chair. stress me out. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like use the chair and sit yeah. in the chair until you're like, I got an idea. Let's try this out. And instead Lines of, of cocaine, usually fix that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's interesting. Uh, but let me <laughs> let me ask you guys this: uh, What have you found to be the most effective thing that makes you ready to tackle something else, or like ready to work again? Coffee. Coffee, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like yes. the perfect drugs. balance of coffee. The, 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 drugs. Drugs. the right, All the drugs. About the right. twenty minutes in, <laughs> it's a balance. <laughs> the peak level. Uh, uh, yeah, so just so. just a good line of meth. Or, uh, line I, of meth. A line of meth. <laughs> Gar- Aaron, That's you know aggressive. you don't do anything. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> 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 uh, um, Especially we check not hey, made for kids. I mean, <laughs> I definitely <laughs> do that every episode. <laughs> I mean that's so, uh, essentially that's what uh, that's what Adderall is. To answer your question, <laughs> actually no. Now I am I am lacking in it because of the virus of <clears throat> unknown origin. Yeah. I used to travel at least once a year out of the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made an effort, whether it was a reward trip I got from some X Y Z company, or I made an effort Might as well on my own. I have like three million miles. I do have a crap ton of miles <laughs> with United, Al- almost two, uh, two million miles. Um, so like. 2017 uh, was my last trip out of the U.S. Um, I uh, went to Nepal. I was there for like a month. Um, it took it takes like three days to get there, anyways, because you're flying from. I was went from Richmond to D.C., D.C. to um, Istanbul, Istanbul to Kathmandu, and then Kathmandu to Lukla. A lot of a lot of flights and a lot of like layover. Um, when I was there, the entire time for the 30 days of being there, one you come very vegetarian very quick because you just don't want to eat meat when you're over there but you become very humble as far as in the way you perceive life the culture shock the culture shock yeah yeah it's like what well, the first it first hit me when i went to when i got off the plane from dc to istanbul because just the smell the musk because there's no aspect of deodorant yeah anywhere on that part of the world so it just hits you like a wall you're like jeez um and then when I was in Nepal, um, the level of poverty is insane. And yeah. also, like, I remember seeing um, people just take a dump anywhere they want. I mean, that's <laughs> you can go to San Francisco for that. But uh, <laughs> Wait, you guys don't do that? <laughs> <laughs> when you see, like, an entire family on a moped, it's like the, the, the father is driving. He's got, like, a two-year-old kid in front of him. His wife's on the back. Wife has a child in like a pouch on her back, and then has like an infant in between them, and he, the the father, is the only one wearing a helmet, weaving in and out of traffic, going like, you know, twenty five miles an hour. Yeah, it's like, I mean, one fall, half your family's gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, so my my best friend lives in in Brazil, and he says that it's it's pretty routine for for people mm-hmm. to die on the road and just to get their bodies just kind of shoved to the side of the road. Yep. Yeah, there's Keep no going. the one thing I learned that there's no aspect of like there's a very lack of empathy um unless it's like your family. Uh as far as there's no concept of lines. It's all me 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 philosophy. Everyone talks about Americans being selfish. Go to a foreign country and it's a lot different. And I understand why. Yeah. Because yeah. they're they're striving for survival. Well, when you're that close, right? When you're on the razor's edge of being able to feed your family or not, right? Yeah. It, you think about how many more things we would sacrifice so, to. Oh, yeah. To when get you there. when you go and so essentially when you experience that, Basically when I came being met. when I came back, um I was a lot more humble, a lot more things that would piss me off didn't as much perspective. Like the first meeting I had was in uh in Arlington 
So I had to drive through two hours of traffic. I used to always hate it and get aggravated by stuff. Oh, that person cut me off. You know, F you. I didn't do that. I was like, oh, that cut me off. <laughs> I was uh, things uh, throughout the day. I'd notice like that would piss me off. I'm like, why am I not getting mad right now? Because it was so, so routine yeah. uh, for me to uh, do that. But what I'm getting at is that that escapism for 30 days of like not really I had aspect I had connection to social but it was very limited because it was very expensive like trying to get Facebook to work on your phone on um, Everest Base Camp ain't cheap so I'm like yeah you certainly <laughs> were mindlessly scrolling probably uh, no I post <laughs> I would post a picture and get off like that just cost me $25 yeah. um, <laughs> so but it was that escapism and I felt recharged and to uh, I need to go back again because it's been a while because 2018 I bought a house that was my vacation 2019 supposed to go to Greece girlfriend broke it off a month before that didn't happen 2020 was going to go to New Zealand had all planned out canceled what happened 2020 some, <laughs> some big thing <laughs> some really big um uh that I forgot and then now finally like this year i'm making an effort to go somewhere like it's either i'm gonna go to iceland for like two weeks mm -hmm. uh, i just don't know what i want to do yet there or uh, i found uh i use a company called g adventures uh, they pre-plan out a lot of it's what i used when i went to everest and there's a 26 day trip in europe it's like from paris you just paris to um to italy to uh poland to belgium i mean it's a you hit like 18 different countries yeah. in 26 days. That's cool. And, and I think what you're describing there that's interesting to me is it's almost like the idea of preventative measures to prevent burnout, right? So some people think about a vacation as... Well, I need a vacation. You, it's you, been 2017. Yeah, yeah, they think about it as like, oh, I need a vacation, so I'm going to go on a vacation. But what you're describing, a lot of what you're describing is like it just gave you perspective that was different right. and got you out of your routines that you were so stuck in so when you came back, things that normally would have triggered a flight or fight mentality or would have triggered stress were no longer in trigger, no longer triggering stress for you because the paradigm shift. Yeah, you had this shift in your mentality. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of interesting, right? Is that we all need that to some degree. Now the thing mm -hmm. is, though, one of the things that Americans do different from Europeans is when they take vacation, they take vacation. I, I don't think you really can decompress honestly with seven days or a week. I understand it's the two yeah. week vacation is the average, but I think to really escape to get that level of decompression, you need at least thirty days in my in my opinion. And don't forget about um the differences of getting culture shock between our country and the rest of the world is we are very, very workaholics. Yes. Like, I get, it's like us versus Japan. But Yeah, yeah. I think they have us beat a little bit, but <laughs> but but yeah. like sick day leave paid leave maternity leave yeah. like all these other countries again it's hard to compare yeah. america because we're so large yeah. to these other countries because some countries are the size of colorado yeah. right yeah. but still like having the ability for employees to say oh i'm gonna take i have 30 days of paid vacation or as a business owner it's a bit harder to do that because like i have to pay myself first and then i have to have the overhead or someone seeing the business to truly go this is off my radar for 30 days. Yeah, it's yeah. just more pre So, yeah, there's a lot. Oh, like, when I went to Nepal, yeah, there was a ton of pre-planning I had sent in advance. Um, and also, uh, I you can put the um, email reply. Yep. I, I made the coolest story in mine. It's like, I'm going to Everest. Um, and I everyone that sent me an email was like, good luck. I mean, it was all more positive type stuff. Yeah. People yeah. understood. Yep. Um, but People crave adventure. You, yeah, you do have to... Um, pre-plan that as a business owner but the thing is when you as you grow and you learn to delegate this is where the delegation happens so where you could disappear for 30 days and everything doesn't fall apart yep that's why i think it's it's somewhat scary if your business solely relies on you and just you because then if you go away so yep. does your business that yep. was one reason why i kind of got really i got burnt out from the sales aspect when i was selling cutco because it gets to a point <clears throat> where you just keep doing the same grind and it doesn't really grow. You can't, again, there are some reps that sell a crap ton and that's great. But at the end of the day, it's not your business. You're just a salesperson. Um, you can't really negotiate your pricing um, to get your margins better. You're at the set margin, you set rate. And I just got really burnt out by that. Mm -hmm. Also, I got hated being called the knife guy. 
Like I didn't want that to be my philosophy or my yeah. not philosophy, my um your tagline. My ta- mm-hmm. um yeah. like what I was known for. Oh, he's the Is knife that moniker? Guy. Uh mm. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Not important. Yeah, I mean but I I, I, I get you, you see my point though. Yeah. It's I it's just doing this that aspect didn't feel and if I stopped working, I stopped making money. Yeah. So um, versus with this business, I could leave for 30 days. There may be some issues that arise that James would be like, shit, what do I do? Yeah. I'm going to pre-plan all that stuff to make sure. I'll be able to answer some emails, but I, my this whole- is documentation's important. Yeah. My whole, <laughs> my whole goal is to avoid a lot of those mistakes. Uh, but when you have that delegation, you have that ability to decompress for 30 days. Yeah. Well, I think or the take biggest, a uh, sabbatical. I think the biggest reason other, you should do it, and I've been very supportive of you doing it, is the idea that you won't blow up in a random ass meeting for no good reason. <laughs> <laughs> Go on vacation. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Get a bust a vein. Uh, well, no, I, I well that was because I had four different businesses yeah, going at yeah, once, and yeah, now yeah. it's just this and yeah, uh, yeah. Um, So James, what what recharges you? Um, wine. I think I think a few things. Golf. So I do use escapism as a tool, right? Because I like sports. Gambling. I like, um, I like sports gambling. Yeah, I like sports. I like, uh, you know, uh, that's that's part of my method for um, for compartmentalizing, right? I think also uh, eliminating distractions, right? There was a period of time for a lot of years, and I only recently changed this a couple months ago, where I had emails to my phone, right? And the fact that I had emails to my phone every time I look up and I'd see it, right? I'd see uh, your preview text, work even mode. if I didn't open it. I'm seeing preview text, and I'm seeing the subject line. And when you're dealing with a client-based business and clients are emailing you, Stress. the subject line usually sucks, right? Most of the time, there's going to be some subject subject line you really didn't want to see, or you know, or they put the whole content of the message in the subject line, which is like the worst thing ever. Maybe like do, Ryan and right? Smith tickets, <laughs> sites down. <laughs> what site? Not good. Not good. <laughs> So, so I put it in the description. <laughs> well, just, no, the subject line. I just see sites down. I'm like, what sites? Because I'm pissed off and I'm just like, site down. <laughs> just eliminating that mm-hmm. meant that I could di- actually disconnect. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because if you, if, if something is still interrupting your thinking, yep. you're not yeah. being It's putting you back into that mindset of like, oh, this person didn't get these files. Yeah. Or like. Yeah. So and so, like, yeah. Well, yeah. and so, and people so you're back in the mode. Well, every person's different, though, in that instance. So, yeah, we're in the same business. We're cc'd on a lot of the same emails. Mm. I don't have my emails turned off. But when someone sends an email blowing me up, I don't let it bother me. I, it, it's yeah. just the way you interpret stuff. So, I, I so, th- there's no. It's gonna be on my mind. Let's yeah, see. Right. This is like the one great book that I would say that's great for this combo is the book by Mark Manson, "The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck." Um. Which, by the way, he turned into a movie, which I sent in the group chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. 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 It's hilarious. I've learned to not. Um, so, if someone sends an email and it is like one of those emails that would throw you off, um, I'll read it. I'm like, I'll deal with it later, and then I don't let it bother me for the rest of the day. Unless someone's threatening me, then it's a bit different, and yeah, then that I, should. But that's rare that. that and happens. I and I respect that you can pull that off. I cannot pull that. That's off. what I'm saying. Everyone's and, different. And, so and you here's have the to... thing. I would I would even say this because I it's not just about it not bothering me, quote unquote. It's now I go into problem solving mode, right? Because I see the problem yep. Yep. and I immediately start thinking about mm. solution, solution, solution. And these are the things that I need to respond with. And then I start thinking about the conversation I need to have with this person, right? To craft and you're working. It. And you're working. You're, yeah. You're basically and back immediately. Your I'm I'm responding to the email without actually sending the email, right? And in my mind, I'm responding to it. So if I, if I see something and I go and I take a shower and I'm like, <laughs> then I'm thinking about it, right? Someone, and I'm like, oh, that's, that's the trauma that's response, right? James. So, that's not me. I'm like, so, huh? So yeah. dis- so so fully disconnecting and removing distractions. There you yeah. go. And and yeah. and then I and this is the more where it takes a lot more practice. I think is then fully engaging into whatever you're then doing. Mm. So like if I am gonna binge watch a show or a series, which I just I just watched the miniseries Blackbird, which is incredible by the way. It's an Apple Plus uh, show, but 
people give me shit all the time for like using subtitles, right? It's like I, I put on subtitles all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And I like them because it allows me to fully engross myself in whatever I'm watching, right? Because I can watch the actors and I can watch their performance. I can read what they're saying and I feel like I'm getting more of it, right? I have to use subtitles because I have three children. I was about to say the, <laughs> That's about the, about the same, same thing. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And there's just, so. if, if we don't have the subtitles on, it doesn't matter how loud it is. Yep. Yeah. They yeah. take that as a personal challenge. Yes, so, so that would be it. <laughs> You and then the other lying. way I think about is golf, right? And when I golf, I try to not mm. have my phone with me. Or if I'm using it to play music, I'm literally like, it's on shuffle and the music's just playing. Yeah, you know, when I used to play, I just left mine in my golf bag. Put yeah, on, put yeah. On mute yeah, you can do that. Bag and yeah, yeah. I take away stress by golfing to add even more stress. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Stupid ball exactly. pit in the hole. Exactly. What about you, Cody? <sighs> oh, God. Video games. Video games in my home lab. They don't make you. Uh, they don't make you work more. You don't. You, do you? Do you feel better <laughs> after I, them? I play micromanagement video games. So like Sim City, Room World. Oh, okay. Um, so it's like I. I like the mechanics of creating systems. Yeah. It so, just tickles my brain. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I. So if. If there is a if there is a entertainment form of crack cocaine for me, it's MMORPGs. Like which ones? Uh. Like World of Warcraft, See, like I, can't uh, get into WoW. I could. It it really it almost doesn't matter what it is. I'm addicted to the the growth of the character. Dude, you're gonna love and the new just, Harry Potter. I'm game. not doing it. <laughs> you're gonna, dude, dude, it's got great reviews. It just came out. So you should play it. Yeah, I probably will. Leviosa. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, it's Grand Theft Auto, but for Leviosa. Harry Potter. Like that's why I like. Oh. So I'm 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 really really drawn to the idea of like uh, the growth of the character, yeah. like the the uh, like and, and those things like yeah. and so that it's a bad thing for me because I will get off of work and be exhausted and just like pour energy into this stupid game and get nothing back. Right. And oh, and you don't feel like that's it. Oh, I feel awful. Wow. I okay. feel like I feel just drained. got off my second job. Oh, huh. that and that's what it, that's the way it. Te now movies do not make me feel that way. TV does. And, there, and I think there's a reason. Mm -hmm. I think it's because TV is, is the, the whole purpose. Like, even if you're watching where there's no ads, the whole purpose was to, like, keep your attention and keep mm -hmm. you engaged uh, so that they can play ads in yep. front of you yep. at the most opportune time. Yeah. It's like yeah. You know, when you watch a movie on, even when you, wa when you watch a movie on TV, there's way less ads at the beginning of the movie. Yep. And at the end, when you're, like, hooked, they're just like, ad, 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 ad. Like, right, it's something exciting, ad. Yeah. McDonald's. Burger King. Oh. Yeah. Whopper, anyway, anyway, I'm sorry. Whopper, yeah. chicken, Whopper. <laughs> sorry, I just I, I wanted to throw that in, but yeah, no. you, were, you were saying video games. So, like, my, so like putting in systems and, like... Well, not just that, but so I also have uh, a home lab. So, mm -hmm. like, I actually have my own virtualized environment for, like, networking and systems. I actually built stuff out of it. So, I guess, I guess that's my creativity side mm -hmm. because it, there's so much in IT that... You just have to keep teaching yourself. So yeah. I like building things, and it helps me. I mean, I'm a workaholic, but so like I don't, I don't know. Like that's my thing. I just like playing with wires and tinkering and building things and breaking stuff. And my wife hates it because I make the internet go on and off all day. <laughs> 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 Why is the internet not working? Or my kid will not be able to play Minecraft. But it's fine. Um, other than that, uh, I would say hunting. Yeah, and it's sitting in the like in reality. A lot of people tell you like hunting is great. Ninety percent of it is sitting in the woods and falling asleep. You Which know? sounds kind of great. So you know, <laughs> I leave my phone and just sit in the woods and fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think turkey hunting is my favorite. But yeah, other you than just that. gotta find those hobbies. Yeah, hobbies is hard for me. So like I'm getting back into woodworking, uh, but I don't want to do like the small. I have no intention to turn it into a business. It just. Um, but I want to do much bigger pieces of furniture. <laughs> he always, I love how you have to make that statement <laughs> because now. That is you an assumption everyone statement? makes in the room right now. Jerk <laughs> off. So, oh, Ryan's got a new business idea. Well, because about no, because we know time, Ryan. We were right. <laughs> we, well, it's because we know Ryan, and Ryan's gonna get way too into it because he got a little dopamine. Now he's gonna get more dopamine. <laughs> <laughs> how do Squeeze I monetize the life this? out of this? Oh man. I yeah. want to get into – this is another reason why I don't want to do small off projects because then that would make me want to sell it. Yeah. It's the bigger yeah. – like I can I, replicate this. And I wanted to start making like epoxy river tables. Oh, yeah, cool. Oh, uh, those like are cool. Using yeah. the live the – one, it's also expensive too. Uh, the epoxy is expensive. You mess up. That's a very expensive cost. But like using the live wood edge. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with my coffee table. It's the first one I'm working on because I don't want to spend so much money on a dining room table and then screw up. Yeah. Then I'm going to do my dining Just room table. that black table. Uh, that that's what I want to do. Yeah, but I need a 
thousand dollars worth of epoxy. Wow. To, yeah. Okay. So and then the slab is like seven hundred bucks. Right. Because those go for like five, six, seven thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, and my parents want one, so I'm gonna build them one after I do one for me. Um, there you go. Great way to avoid burnout. Spend thousands on uh, woodworking material. Well, no, it's it's <laughs> like oh uh, no, I get here, I, I get it. The, I mis- get it. the misleading thing of like oh, build this farmhouse table for only two hundred dollars for DIY. Yeah, it if just fails to notice stuff. to tell you that you have to buy three thousand dollars in uh, tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I all own now, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a whole wood shop. Cody's seen it. I have. You need a planer. I have even more. That's the last thing I need is a planer. But I don't need a planer for for what I'm doing. You always need a planer. <laughs> this, I need a plane the size of this room to plane a table. So uh, I need a CNC machine. Or I'm just going to go to someone that has one. You can go to, uh, there's workshops in Richmond that have CNC right. machines you can rent out. Besides uh, the point, woodworking is one thing I, um, I want to get back into because I have all the stuff. Um, I've grown weed uh, when that became legal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th- I did two grows and is actually a pretty involved process. Uh, I did not turn that into a business because that's against <laughs> the law. Uh, and the that's of, different. <laughs> it's different. But I found it, I like the challenge of new things, of me not knowing something and starting into something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the problem is I end up throwing too much money at it. Yeah. So golf is one. I just need to make an effort to do more of it. Yeah. Um. So I, I, I'm, in the, I'm, in, I'm actually in the same boat with you. I get way too into things. Uh, and so I like I have to pick the things because I will I will throw my whole life at it yeah. and uh, just like very little regulation <laughs> of, <laughs> of of of, uh, of what I want to do. But uh, and and this is this is the this is the really weird thing that recharges me that maybe some people some people out there are are similar to. But I find that doing a job where the money doesn't matter is the thing that recharges me most. And this is and that's wild to me because yeah. so uh, I, I filmed a movie, a full feature length movie. It was uh, uh, over the process of like four months. Uh, now we weren't, we weren't filming every day, obviously, because we all had jobs. Uh, but I was, uh, we would do two days every, every uh, weekend or something like that. Uh, and, uh, but it was like, the, the whole process of just like putting an immense amount of energy. I'm telling you, it was like, it was making a movie is hard work. And I was the DP on it. So I was doing all the, all, uh, I was doing all the lighting and we are, we were also doing the audio, but we were doing lighting, shooting, setting up lights. And it was just basically just me and my, me and my gaffer. Uh, and so we just, and, and so we were putting in 12 hour days. We were waking up at three 30 in the morning, driving uh, to Maryland and then uh, staying the night and then driving back the next day. And we were just putting in hours and hours. And it was so weird to me. I was getting paid, uh, but it was so weird to me that when I finished that, like uh, like when I, when I would finish a two-day wor- uh, two weekend doing that, I was so ready to come back and do like all the things I didn't feel like doing. And yeah, because so, it was you, you. Did you feel like it was because? And I, and there's there's a job that I do every year uh, that's that travels around the U.S. But it's like uh, this year was in Florida. Yeah. And I'm I'm basically working with a team of other social media people, mm-hmm. and so I'm one of two uh, video guys, and uh, I I do more the more technical stuff. Like I do I do the lighting, the audio, and the camera stuff, and he does a lot of a lot of the direction, more creative stuff. Uh, the other the other video guy. But um, well, I mean, do you think that was because of the feeling of accomplishment that you had, or was it that you saw something through, or was it just that you put a lot of effort towards something? I think that you it were was. Passionate about? I think it was the focused effort. Yeah. I think it was the the physical. I mean, I was I was leaving like physically just like a puddle, worn out. Yeah. Just physically a, a straight up puddle, puddle, and I think that was I think that's part of it because like I've been so I've been overweight like most of my life and this is this is maybe maybe this was part of it but I was I've been overweight like most of my life uh up until last May I was in a car wreck and we had like a ton of back pain so I, st- I started getting in shape started going to the gym uh lost I've lost like 70 70 pounds now Woo-hoo! and oh, yeah. uh uh thanks uh and then but like what's wild is like I've realized I wish I wish to god that I'd done this 10 15 years ago because like when I I, I go to the gym in the morning and I spend about an hour and a half there. I do weights, then I do cardio, and then I do a sauna. 
uh, and then like the sauna is like actually it one of the great decompressing tool. Yes. Uh, blows my mind. Like hmm. just, I had no idea people talk about, Oh, you know, you're going to feel so much better, but I had no idea how much mentally better all this has made me. Mm-hmm. And so that was, that was, yeah, yeah. I, I go the opposite well, way. I just don't, I, I go cold. Well, no, you yeah. should, you should do both. And I'm getting in, into starting my day. It's just getting over that hump of starting the day with a cold shower. It's great. 30 seconds. Oh, it's great. It's the Wim Hof method. It's great. Let's I do don't it. know if you know who that is, but um, I'm. Don't that was one of my other escapism was either to do his thing with him. It's seven, I think it's seven days in Poland. That's where he's at, and it's $2,600. I would he, do it. If I could, like a group, I would do I think it. it's like a group of 20. Yeah. sells out. Oh, yeah. Um, There's a waiting list and everything for it. You have a, like a whole pool of like, you know, you do the whole thing. It There's is, a whole science and reason, amazing. but amazing. you should start your day off with a cold shower like you know you know 30 to 90 seconds five minute shower and then doing a song doing both is a great way to, i you, you know. know i've heard that too i i think the most approachable thing that i've discovered and actually just it's funny we're talking about this because i just did this this morning for the first time right and i've always taken hot showers right fill the room with steam hot showers right and the the stat i heard was um was people had 30 percent less sick days through the course of a year when they simply added 30 seconds of cold water to mm-hmm. the end of a hot shower, yep. right? Mm. So just doing 30 seconds at the end of cold after your body's been heated, right? Mm-hmm. It was miserable right? because I've only ever done hot showers, right? And I was like, this is terrible. You gotta breathe. Right? But I literally counted out 30 seconds in my mind, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did you do it suddenly? Did you just cut all the hot off for 30 hot, seconds? Hot <laughs> to... <laughs> Cold water, oh, right? Okay. And it's like a real shock to your system, right? It yeah, really you is. Need, it's like, you need to try to do and it. And then you have to breathe, You'll start right? psyching <laughs> yourself out when I was first starting to do it before I started doing ice baths. You start like a week of just doing hot showers and eating cold showers. And you just like get the time longer. And then the the like psyching yourself out is just first thing in the morning. You're standing in the shower and you're like, I have to turn this on. It's part, really of, the, it's part of the process. Just like, okay, it's cold. <laughs> oh, it's but it's worth it though because like I have really bad ADHD and like – uh, shower thoughts go away like you're like there and present counting down because that's all you can think about you're like i'm just cold right now yeah you know? that's like actually nothing, a good point like yeah. nothing else is going through your mind you're like okay i have to breathe yeah <gasps> so like, so <laughs> cold showers do it if you don't have in the yet, in the sauna the, uh i make myself sit in there for 21 minutes it's at that's a long time and it's a hundred and it's 180 degrees well is do it you it? do sessions is or 20 it, minutes straight it, 20 minutes it, straight wow it and so yeah well, what type of sauna is it it's dry or dry. Wet? dry. It's yeah. dry. So I do, uh, but I don't. I, I don't let myself use my phone. I don't let mm. myself. Uh, oh, I'm in I, there with music. That's I'm I, I don't listen to music. I don't listen to anything, and I don't listen to music. I don't listen to anything while I work out either. Uh, this was from oh. Andrew Huberman oh. was saying. Who hurt uh, you? All right, David Goggins. <laughs> who, who hurt you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> David Goggins is like no, I don't, no, no. Uh, poopy pants people only <laughs> listen to music <laughs> no, while no. working out. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> no, after words he uses. Talking. So, uh, uh, Andrew Huberman uh, is a is a is a is a neuroscientist, and he talks about uh, uh, dopamine layering. So, if yep. you do something that you enjoy, and then you layer on a dopamine enhancing thing with it, you can become dependent on the thing that you're layering with. Uh, so, like if you need, yeah. like if you start listening to music while you work out, y- you can and and you you start to rely on that extra little dopamine. Uh, it can get to the point where you need the music to work out, and so you can't even think it of doing. It a habit. You yeah. can't even think of working yeah. out without the music. I've uh, like and two so, days ago, I showed up at the gym and my AirPods were dead, and I was like, "Shit, do I really want to work out?" <laughs> <laughs> I still worked out. I had the AirPods in my head just, but I had that that question hmm. to pop up. Yeah, but it's an interesting fact. That's just, yeah. Uh, so he said. So he he's saying if if there is something that you do that you enjoy doing and you want to continue enjoy doing, he said, don't layer it with dopamine. Allow it to be what its own thing. What if you don't enjoy working out? I don't know. I look. Mu- I the music helps. Do it. Look. Do whatever you want to do. I. <laughs> uh, it's. It, it is. It is one of the best parts of my life now. Cause like I, I like my whole. I have this like hour and a half certain- at the beginning of the day where I'm thinking and like concentrating on not work, morning and night. not anything other than holy crap! I can't get this up. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. work out first thing in the morning or in the evenings? First thing in the morning. Okay. So right. so six uh, about seven o'clock. I, I wake nice. up at six thirty. I get there at seven, and then 
There you go. I get there at 7 p.m. Yeah. For an inspection. Is it, but anyway, but uh, so so that's so that's been like unbelievably helpful to me to have that have something that I'm just like focusing and working really hard at every mm-hmm. day. Whereas before, I was like, I just have this like one or two weeks. And like just having something that I'm working so hard at that I can't think of anything else. That's what recharges me. And so it, it just it's the only way for me to really disconnect because yeah. I think we're, we're yeah. accomplishing the same thing. Yeah, totally. I just yeah. have to have something that like forces the issue because I, yeah. I have no control over the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we talked about we talked about disconnection, escapism. Right. We talked about being fully invested in whatever you're doing Mm -hmm. i think there is absolutely something to be said for some of the days where i felt the most physically exhausted because it was you know uh, seven or eight back-to-back creative meetings that required a lot of thought and thinking uh are some of the days that i feel the most uh at the end of the day accomplished right Mm -hmm. and that feeling days yeah Yeah. that feeling of satisfaction shoot days right oh i love it when we have like uh, okay so uh we did one shoot day that was just the best right and we were doing stop motion. So we were we had like yeah. two different shoots going on at the same time with the same client, right? Yeah, yeah. So we had one shoot going on where we were doing stop motion. We had another shoot going on where we were doing small micro content. Yeah. And we ended the day with like probably 20 to 30 videos made. Yeah. Or, or like, yeah. well, filmed. Yeah. Cutting is a whole separate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a whole They're not made situation. yet. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, you this feeling of like you got a lot done, right? And you physically exerted yourself towards something, right? Yeah, a yeah. Feeling of it's so gratifying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shoot days, shoot days are kind of like that. And so I guess uh, if you're out there and you're not recharged by like going home and like mentally, uh, mentally doing something, maybe pick up woodworking. Maybe pick up something that's going to like really engage you. It's all Re- kinds. I yeah, think one thing we haven't thought. talked about either is uh, managing expectations. Right. And being being like starting a new business and having this expectation of I'm going to have all this money tomorrow or I'm going to have all these clients to like X amount of time and not having set realistic expectations. And when you get hit with not meeting it, that could trigger, you know, That's, burnout. Right. And then being able to reevaluate, say, oh, well, maybe this isn't as realistic and actually really setting manageable well, expectations. That's the problem with social media is it gives you false oh, expectations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you only see the good stuff of because no one wants to know about oh, the bad not. days. Yep. Because uh, if we post it, like all that person's just negative, and like those interactions, just be positive. Those posts all the time. don't get likes. Yeah. They don't get. Yeah. Um, you may one person think, "Oh, what's wrong?" Those don't get interactions on Facebook. That's why you don't see it that most. You only see the positive stuff. Um, you and see the work behind the, the biggest thing. Um, so, like the real estate business, my business partner kept comparing us to other people on the speed and how fast their business was growing. And I was like, dude, they're in this full time. They don't have another job. Or if they do have another job, their job allows them to work from home. As long as they like, you know, they get the task done, they can focus on the business. I have a whole nother business that I'm working on and you're working on a whole nother business that you have a nine to five and you cannot escape as far as that. So it, comparing us to someone that is fully invested, just told you, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also, they're older than you, so they have a, and they've been also been doing this longer than you. They have a bigger network than you, so, and they also come from a different area of town than you that might be benefit to that aspect. You can't compare yourself to someone else because then all you're gonna do is shoot yourself in the foot mm-hmm. and never be happy. So, yeah, yeah. that's managing one. expectations. You're right. That's yep. huge. Yeah, I thought about that earlier. Yeah. Um, and then one thing too about working out is maybe it's not just escapism, but like pushing through, like being uncomfortable. Cold, yes, yeah. cold shower, making myself yeah. do something extremely hard yeah. right when I wake up. Yeah, it, it's it has given me more focus than when I took. Uh, I used to I I used to take like um it's not Adderall but it's something like Adderall. It's Ritalin? like it's not Ritalin. Uh, Cocaine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> meth. That's what it was. That's what uh, it was. Uh, totally. No, it was like an it was MDM? like an extended release. Uh, Concerta, not Concerta. Some drug, that whatever does, it was, whatever. What, yeah, doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. Doesn't matter. Um, uh, it was, it was an extended. They run enough ads, thing. probably, that they get enough publicity. The show is not <laughs> fun. The yeah. happy blue pill for old people. Uh, <laughs> uh, where where, where were we? Where <laughs> were we? <laughs> it sounds like you still need the pill. The, oh, show. Right. <laughs> the show is brought to you by Pfizer. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. No, <laughs> I, I. So uh, I had no idea that I would be able to like actually achieve that level of focus without medication. Yeah, and it's just like. 
it's uh it's it's been life-changing i wish to god i wish to god that i had done this 10 15 years ago do you feel the car crash kind of enhanced that like when you like was that like an oh shit like yes i'm mortal yeah and then you're like i need to get my stuff besides like your back hurting and everything else was that a a cause for that change I was, in your perspective or? okay so at the time i was i was that that was when i was uh working um 6 a.m to to 1 yeah. a.m every every yep. single day um and that's it i was just so stressed out that like something like it, it was just it was like the last straw like yeah. i couldn't do anything i yeah. couldn't do anything else I, I couldn't do anymore. I couldn't take on any more stress, and it was just like it just snapped. Like the moment my I, I, my car slammed into the because it was it was not a small wreck. So, no, it was I, those I, pictures. I think I, I there's a a reason behind that, and it's the dr- like your life before the the car accident. How many things did you do throughout the day, or your hobbies involved of you raising your adrenaline? Like hardly ever. Mm-hmm. So when you experience that life defi- uh, defining moment, um, for me, I got really attached into skydiving and i've done a ton of jumps and believe me any problems you had that day go right out the window when that door when you're at that door all shit just if someone was mad at you girlfriend broke up with you all that shit just goes right out the window and you're focused on that exact moment and then it's also loud as hell um and especially when you're first skydive like i've never done a tandem jump in my life i've never Mm -hmm. been attached to someone because one, it doesn't count. I was trying to get my license, um, and those tandem jumps don't count towards license. So that's why mm-hmm. my first jump was with two uh, people that or coaches essentially uh, holding on to you to keep you level as your first jump. You know how nerve wracking that is. The first time you ever skydive is not attached to someone where they're doing all the work. No, you got your own parachute and you're jumping out of a plane at fifteen thousand feet or give or take that's terrifying yeah yeah (laughs) that's that's fun now after doing it when i landed (laughs) fine i'm terrified at the top of tall ladders so (laughs) (laughs) the thing is i wanted to do it again after and the aspect of adrenaline helps push you um or that fear of your life ending in a way sounds terrible when i put it like that (laughs) Um, gives you a different perception on life and things you should change. Yeah, yeah it's perspective. Like a, oh shit, moment, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I thought, yeah. It, so everything that I thought mattered because I had, I, I had a production that day. I had a shoot that I was like, I was three minutes late for. Uh, and uh, wow, like was, that's three minutes. Okay. That's, yeah, that's a little. You were usually like 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so you were I'm early. getting a lot well, better. Well, I'm getting early. a lot better. Three minutes later at the time, right? <laughs> at but the time. He was probably going to be 20 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, it, it, man, everything that I thought was, um, and another thing that, another thing that happened recently is my daughter was in the ICU for six mm-hmm. days. I'll do it. And like, man, you, you, you get some perspective real quick and, and, and in, with with uh one part of my business the, the real estate photography videography that stuff there is this you 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 get into a bubble where like uh these clients their their whole life is wrapped up in this uh because you know it's your home biggest yep. investment all that stuff it's like you know it's sometimes a million dollars sometimes six hundred thousand dollars it's the most money that you've that you're 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 dealing with in your life and so your whole their whole everything their emotions are wrapped up into it. And so a lot of times that, that stress gets passed on to the realtor who also takes it on and takes that, takes that energy on. Uh, and so like you get sucked into it too. And so it's like, it's just like really high stress. And like you, you get into this bubble where it's like, Oh my God, if they don't get the pictures, life's pretty much over. And then nothing has, has snapped me out of that as much as one, my daughter being uh, in the hospital and two, uh, being in that wreck where mm-hmm. it, uh, it, it wasn't a, g- it was not a gentle wreck. It was not a, it was not a, uh, a small thing. No yeah, it's, it's, you become yeah. hyper, you become bender. hyper aware. You're focused on certain things. Time slows um, down. I remember quite literally on, yeah, on one of my jumps, it was like jump eight or nine. Um, the exit I had out of the plane wasn't clean mm-hmm. and I was on, ended up on my back. So when you're falling towards Earth and you're looking at the sky <laughs> and you should be the other way around, um, it's very scary. And you're also – I wasn't just on my back. I was also all over the place. It was just – at the the exit wasn't clean for whatever reason. I don't know why. And my 
the coach or trainer that was with me is trying to regain control. And then it hit me as far as I remember that one bit of training uh, I had is all I had to do was um, take one hand like this and then your body just rolls over. And then just like that, my body rolled over and I regained control. Cool. And I wasn't able to complete the rest of the training that I was supposed to do for that flight because I had about five more seconds before I had to pull my shoot. Um, but time slowed down. Mm -hmm. uh, what felt like five minutes was only, a, a, uh, I would say, 30 because the free fall is about 60 seconds. So yeah. I was free falling, not in the right position for about you know the 95% of that. And then when I got uh, so I went from 15,000 feet and then when I looked at my altimeter, it was at 5,500 feet. So, um, cause the last thing you want to do is have your parachute mm -hmm. deploy when you're upside down. Granted, you can still be fine. Maybe it's just not <laughs> <Maybe>. ideal. <laughs> There's maybes. We but, don't like the maybes on that, in that scenario. <laughs> and what's crazy is I went up one more time that day too. Um, but that it was the, the heightened awareness and, and you just don't care about a lot of BS. It's the whole thing. Like you become more humble and the things that would cause problems or you would get angry about because mm -hmm. you're so focused on you've been in that world for so long and like oh wait yeah uh, you don't need these photos right now and what You'll what live. what i think what really woke me up after the fact was like i felt so much better when the wreck happened because i was like oh my god no one's gonna expect me to be anywhere and mm, i was like wow that's yeah. a feeling yeah. of like that's uh oh that's thank crazy. god i had this wreck because like, now i don't have thank god i yeah, almost yeah, died right <laughs> and and i think that's a sense Mm. That's that's where you really it's a signal that okay, the Something's life you were living before that was not the life you should be living. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. do you have and like and and it, it is it's it's now causing one of the best shifts in my business. I think it's awesome. it's, it's it's really stressful and really hard for me to do, but I'm I'm letting go of like a lot of things, and I'm uh I I have taken a business acquisition. I'm taking on a business acquisition role as opposed to just the guy who does all the shooting. Yep. And that's so freeing. Oh my God. Hmm. Well, that, that forced growth for you, right? right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. One way or another. So if you're not experiencing <laughs> the growth you want, just go wrap your car around a, a telephone pole. Well, I, I would recommend you. We are not out. offering advice on this podcast. <laughs> jump out of an airplane versus wrapping. Yeah. Them. Maybe do that. If you want to wake up and you want to have like, as far as something that's more safe, <laughs> on a, actually you're more likely to die in a car accident than you are to have an airplane yeah, that, is yeah. um, that is true but it's just the conception of oh oh is my shoe going to play one you always have two parachutes so always. i think that's one aspect i think you need to experience that level every person should at some point like when it's i went adventure to, you get that adventure that's why adventure. i i didn't want to go on a vacation when i went to nepal to like to sit back and relax and get drunk that's doesn't excite me anymore mm -hmm. when i was younger nowadays it's actually our generation too yeah, the generation I, doesn't like drinking as much as other generations. Really? Yeah. Actually, there was a yeah, it's a release from either Harvard or MIT. They actually put out a release about our our generation and younger are taking more of a sober lifestyle than older generations. Interesting. Yeah. So, like going to Mount Everest and doing that because I had always some crazy idea in my head, like I want to climb Mount Everest. Now, half, about halfway through the Everest Base Country, I'm like, I ain't ever <laughs> doing that. <laughs> it's just like this is exhausting. This Granted, is I didn't properly prepared 100 percent or nor trained um, in the way, but I lost a ton of weight. Um, but you can die on that trek, and um, you also the lack of uh, altitude that gets to you. Yeah. Um, so. Exp go out there and experience something adventurous. Yeah, is what I'd say. All right, adventure is the key. Cool. This has been a really good podcast. I think so. I feel yeah. like it anyway. Yeah, very much oh. so. So next time on Between Two Ferns, <laughs> <laughs> we had someone comment on our you know, YouTube short. <laughs> we can get rid of it if you want. <laughs> the damn ferns. <laughs> I think we need more ferns. If anything else, we'll, we'll put these behind need, your chairs. Too. I think we need a second one. A third one and a fourth one? Between a fifth one and a sixth one. <laughs> between, between two bushes. Between six ferns. <laughs> <laughs> it's better because there's more. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, more. thank you for tuning into the Freshman Media Podcast. We'll see everyone next week.